All right, so let's get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is just open up the Chrome browser and I'm gonna look up Ruby on Rails, uh, install Mac. And then the first link that I'm gonna see is by Go Rails. And this is the website that I usually follow when I'm installing Ruby on Rails. And it tends to work for me if I do this. So then you just go step by step and you run each of these commands and it'll set it up. So the first one is to install Brew. So Brew is like the, the package manager for Mac. So what you have to do is go into your terminal and then that's where you'd run this. Enter this command and this will install Brew. Caps lock on. All right, so just like that, it's installing Brew and that'll set everything up. Okay, so that looks good. And then one thing to note that is when you do install some things on Mac, I usually like to restart the terminal. So that just means like close out and then reopen. Because sometimes there is a little bit of delay. Like you have to reset the terminal just so you can get the package. So if you're getting an issue like brew command not found, just try to restart your terminal and that could fix it. All right, so the next thing is to install Ruby. So. The first thing is actually to install ASDF, which is the manager for the different versions of Ruby. So I'll just copy this code here. I'll run it. Now I've already installed ASDF, but for you, this would just go and it would set everything up and you should be good to go. And the next thing you do is you add the plugin for Ruby and Node.js uh, for ASDF. So we're going to do that. And now this is set up. We have uh, the Ruby plugin and the ASDF, and that'll allow us to run the next command, which is to install the Ruby version. Now, I already have Ruby installed in my MacBook, but I just recorded this video before and I didn't have it. And I actually ran into this issue where there was like some sort of problem with the gem. So I had to run this command to fix that. You know, permission. So actually I had to do this command right here. Sudo chon. Now, I'm not sure if this really like fixed anything, but I did run this and then it seemed to work afterwards. So if you do have an issue, I, I like I wouldn't do this first, but if you go to do ASDF install Ruby and it doesn't work and you're getting an issue like something like permission not found for the gem, try that command. All right, but anyways, we would just run this to install the version of Ruby. So I'll run that. I already have 3.3.1 installed. But for you, it would just load and it would take maybe like a few minutes to install. And after that is done, we can run the next commands, which is just checking if Ruby's installed. So if you do which Ruby, this will show the location that Ruby's installed to. So for us, it's using the ASDF uh, shim. So that's perfect. It means that we're using the ASDF manager. And then we can also do Ruby V to check the version of Ruby. So it says 3.3.1. That's the one that we installed. So that means everything's good there. The next thing that we can do is install Node.js. So we're gonna need Node.js for Yarn, just in case you're gonna add any like JavaScript packages. So we'll just go ahead and run that. Again, I already have this installed. So then we can move on to configuring Git. So for Git, you just uh, would run each of these and then you'd replace like the name with your name, the email with your email, and then you generate an SSH token. So I've actually already done this. Uh, but you just follow this, put in your name, your email, and then at the end you get this SSH token, which you can then cat. And then you take the results of that, like this file, whatever you get back in the terminal, and you go and add it to your GitHub account. So if you don't already have a GitHub account, you want to install that right now. Not install it, but if you if you don't already have a GitHub account, you want to create an account. And then to add this SSH keys, just go into your settings and then over to SSH and GPG keys, and then you add your SSH key there. So after you do that, you should be able to run the next command, which is gonna check if the SSH is set up and we're authenticated. And you'll see that I have this message, hi, you've successfully authenticated. So perfect, that means everything's good. And the next step would just be installing Rails, which we can do with gem install Rails. And we're just using this specific version. I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And I already have Rails installed, but for you it might just load for a second and install all the different dependencies for Rails. 
But once you have that set up, you can run rails-v to check the rails version. Now actually when I installed it, it didn't show up. It said like no command found rails. But to fix that, I just exited out of the console and restarted. And just like that, it, it was able to figure out about rails. So the next step is to choose a database that you want to use. So there's a few different options like SQLite, MySQL, but the most beginner friendly one that I've worked with in the past is PostgreSQL. So that's what I used. And to install that, you just do brew install PostgreSQL. Just like this, you run it in the console. Now we already have PostgreSQL, but I guess it's just going to install it again. That's fine. All right, and then you can run this command to start the PostgreSQL service, which will also just put it in the background so that you already have, you, so you always have PostgreSQL running on your MacBook. Then final steps. Uh, there was this step, but when I tried to run this, I'll show you, it doesn't actually do anything for me. See, it says the package path specified was invalid. So I'm just gonna ignore that because it didn't cause any problems for me. And then now that we've done all this, which actually is pretty simple this time, because we don't have to wait for it to download, all we have to do is to create our new app, Rails app, we would do the Rails new command, and then we could put in the name of our app, and then also I'll set the database to use PostgreSQL by saying dash D, PostgreSQL, and then you just run it like that. Now it's installing all the dependencies, and it's creating our app. That, set it up now we can cd into my app the first thing you do in a when you're using postgresql is you uh, create the database so we're going to run rails db create and if this runs it means postgres is working so you'll see that it worked because we got these this feedback here and then to start the server we'll just run rails s and now the server is running if we go over to localhost 3000 uh, we'll see this nice rails logo which means that Ruby on Rails is set up. So congratulations, you've set up Rails and now you're ready to start building your dream app. So let's just build a little sample app right now. So I'm going back into terminal and I'm gonna run a scaffold command. So I'll type in, <laughs> ah, this terminal is driving me crazy. Okay. So I'll type in Rails G scaffold blog post. Oh, you can actually do it a lot of ways. You can do it uppercase or you can just do it underscore between it and then I'll give it a title a body which could either be type text or rich text which is a built-in text editor for rails which allows you to do things like bold indent and code highlighting too so we're gonna do that and then it's also have an image which will be type attachment this is also a built-in library in rails which is gonna use active storage then we just press enter that works so everything's good there uh, next, we do have to run a command for action text and active storage. So we're going to type in Rails action text colon install, which is going to add some migrations and things to set up those libraries. And then all we have to do is just migrate the database by doing Rails db migrate. And you'll see that all of our new tables and fields have been added. And then we just go and restart the server. Go back to the browser. And then we can go over to uh, slash blog underscore posts and we'll see that we're on the blog post page and then we can create a new blog post right here just name my first blog post just built this Ruby on Rails app and it's awesome and then we can even add an image and create the blog post and just like that you have a working Ruby on Rails app and from here you can add so many things to your blog app or to any app that you want to build. Uh, me personally, I'm working on a few projects. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'm really excited to start making more content for the channel. I'm sorry that I've been gone for so long. And I really didn't mean to be gone for that long. It's just, I guess I've got sidetracked and just haven't really been making myself focus as much as I wanted to. But I'm done with that. And I'm going to really focus on making more videos. So I'm back now. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. You learned how to install Ruby on Rails on your Mac. And yeah, if you had any problems with it though, please leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it. Anyways, hope you guys have an awesome day.